my friends and welcome back to Mass Effect. In our last video, we did spend the day on the Citadel completing a bunch of assignments, what I keep calling side quests. I'm not sure it really matters, but I should probably use the correct terminology in the game. Unfortunately though, we did not finish, but we're nearly there because I found my last keeper I need to scan. And I also found someone else I need to talk to, so, TBD if we get another side quest for the Citadel or not. But before we start all of that, a couple of befores we start all of that, I realized when I was editing the last video that I did not read the quest update for Asari Consort when it completed. And it says that Septimus has apologized to Shaira and Zelton has ceased his petition. To show her gratitude, the Consort re rewarded you with an oddly shaped trinket. It appears to be of Prothean design but doesn't seem to have any purpose beyond sentimental value and i'm not sure what that is because i'm not sure where that would fall under here i don't really have anything to to, to plug in anywhere so so yeah that happened but before we continue questing let's do my normal beginning of video and do some codex entries so for primary, I think we're actually done. So let's read a few secondaries and, and see how long this takes us. <laughs> okay, so for non-council races, I think we have Krogan Genophage to still do because I remember doing the rebellions. So anyway, the Genophage bioweapon was created to end the Krogan rebellions. From the start, the Krogan had overwhelmed the council. Only timely first contact with the Turians saved the council races. So at that time, it would have been Asari and... Salarian. I keep forgetting Salarian. The Turians fought the Krogan to a standstill, but sheer weight of Krogan numbers indicated the war could not be won through conventional means. The Turians collaborated with the Salarians to genetically engineer a counter to the rapid breeding of the Krogan. Okay, so I, I get they, they make babies really fast, but how long until they reach maturity? It's not like they pop out a full-grown Krogan, right? <laughs> so there is a gap in in being born and being, you know, battle-ready. I just, I don't know what that is. But anyway, off topic. <laughs> the genophage virus gained the energy to replicate by eating key genetic sequences. Every cell in every Krogan had to be altered for the bioweapon to be foolproof. Otherwise, the Krogan could have used gene therapy to fix the affected tissues. Once a genophage strain could find no more genes to eat, it would starve and die, limiting spin-off mutation and contamination. I mean, I, I guess there's that, right? Uh, this created genetic flaw is hereditary. The Salarians believe the genophage would be used as a deterrent, a position the Turians viewed as naive. <laughs> Once the project was complete, the Turians mass produced and deployed it. The Krogan homeworld, their colonies, and all occupied worlds were infected. So does that mean the Salarians created it to just use as a threat to the Krogan, but the Turians just kind of laughed and like, oh no, we're really using it? Is that what happened? Or am I, again, reading way too much into this? Anyway, <laughs> the resulting mutation made only one in a thousand Krogan pregnancies carry to term. It did not reduce fertility, but offspring viability. The rare females able to carry children to term became prizes the Krogan warlords fought brutal battle over. Well, that's awful. The Krogan are a shadow of their former glory. While the rebellions took place centuries ago, they are constantly reminded of the horror of the genophage and their inability to counter it. The release of the genophage is still controversial, bitterly debated in many circles. Okay, but so it took place centuries ago, but if you're only having one in a thousand, how many millions and billions of Krogan were there? I just, I mean, it seems like there's still a bunch around. It's not like they're down to five Krogan. And and not that that makes any of this okay, because this is completely awful. But anyway, I'm off topic again. So next codex entry, Corian's economy. Again, the world building is insanely awesome. So the migrant fleet has a little economic base operating in a state of perpetual hand to mouth. 
While Corian ships include light manufacturing and assembly plants, they lack heavy industries such as refining and shipbuilding. The fleet has tankers for water purification and oxygen cracking, but the space-intensive nature of agriculture limits food production. A single disaster could destroy the fragile balance. That's not a hand-to-mouth existence for like, what, 17 million people, did it say? Is not, it's not a good thing. So the Koreans earn income in creative ways because the government is obliged to provide food, water, air, and medical support for every individual. The concla conclave strategically determines the course of the fleet to bring in resources and income. A species who suspects the migrant fleet is heading towards their, sh space, their space often offers a gift of surplus starships, fuel, and resources to convince the conclave to alter course. As the fleet passes through a system, swarms of mining vessels work over asteroids for metals and siliceous materials and cometary bodies of water, ice, and organics. Corian miners are adept at locating and strip mining space-borne resources. This sparks conflicts with corporations already working the system. Large mining concerns spend millions on lobbyists and public relations portraying the Corians as locusts, devouring the resources of a system before moving on. I mean, I guess you could make that argument, but like, I don't know. I don't know what their other option is because I would have thought they would have find a planet, but I'm guessing that's not an option. So they're just kind of doing what they need to do to survive. And you can't blame them for that either. Anyway, off topic again. <laughs> the greatest asset of the Quarians is their rarefied skills. Most are experienced miners. Due to their life of perpetual salvage and repair, they are skilled engineers and technicians. More than once, the very corporations that lobby against the Quarians have made backroom deals with the fleet, arranging for skilled Quarians to fill space engineering jobs that other species would demand higher wages for. Quarians are wildly hated among the working classes. The Quarians are coming to take our jobs is a common response to the fleet's approach. Okay, well, let's do one more today. So government, due to the Koreans precarious existence and the need to enforce a strict rationing, government is somewhat autocratic. The migrant fleet's operations are directed by the Admiralty, a board of five military officers who are advised by a legislative body called the Conclave. Each vessel in the fleet has the right to send representatives to the Conclave aboard the flagship. The number of representatives is based on crew size. Larger clans with bigger ships and and more votes form the cores of political blocks. Opposition comes from the Outriders Coalition with delegates from thousands of smaller ships. The Admiralty defers to the Conclave's decisions in most circumstances. However, if all five members agree that a Conclave decision jeopardizes the survival of the fleet and cannot get the Conclave to address their concerns, they have the right to summarily overturn the legislative decision. After the Admiralty uses the extraordinary power, they must resign. If the Admiralty does not step down after using their veto, the rest of the military is obliged to arrest them. Pretty, pretty strict. Each ship captain has authority over his vessel, but is advised by an elective civilian council, just as the Admiralty is advised by the Conclave. This relationship may range from cooperation to polite tolerance to outright hostility, but any captain who overrules his council without good reason is relieved to command by the Admiralty. Many Quarian ships are owned by clans who pool their resources to purchase used vessels from private sellers. Large ships are prestigious for big, rich clans, but a small ship means status for a small clan with enough personal wealth to afford a private vessel. Clan vessel captains are not subject to dismissal by the Admiralty. Abusive captains are a family problem if they do not disrupt the operations of the fleet. It's so very complicated. Like, I feel like I need to read this several more times to fully understand it. But again, the world building is amazing and I love it. And I feel like we spent so much time on codex entries because I feel the need to chime in all the time. But anyway, the last- No, I'm waiting to speak with one of the counselor's assistants. I need to talk to him, but the last keeper is right here, finally. <laughs> Thank you, data collection is complete. The, the game is very excited for me. So let's see, journal update. So 
so it looks like it's all done. You've scanned several keepers and sent off the results. No doubt these findings will uncover some interesting and, as of yet, unknown facts about the small insect-like creatures. Yes, someone needs to figure out what they're doing and what's going on because, I, like I said, I feel like they're going to toss us all out airlocks or something. But anyway, after all of that, <laughs> let's talk to no, Rear... I just want to ask a couple of questions. Rear Admiral Kahoku. Congratulations on becoming the first human Spectre Commander. I'm certain you'll be up to the challenge. Thank you. Who are you? And how, yeah, how do you know about that? Who told you I was a Spectre? I'm a senior officer with the Alliance. I knew about your candidacy before the Normandy was sent to Eden Prime. My name is Admiral Kahoku. It's about time the Alliance got one of our own in with the Spectres. We need people like you to deal with our problems. Problems? Is something wrong, Admiral? I'm getting stonewalled by bureaucratic assholes. <laughs> Nothing new. <laughs> Maybe you can help me, Shepard. One of my recon teams was investigating some strange activity out in the Traverse. We lost contact yesterday. Now I can't get clearance to check it out. Suddenly it's a restricted area. But that doesn't apply to you, Shepard. Spectres can go anywhere they want. You could find out why my team dropped out of contact. Yeah, I can. I can go anywhere I, I want. So don't worry. Okay, and we'll see. Well, I mean, can I get some more details before I fully commit? I'll look for them if I have time. Well, that's more than most will commit to. <laughs> I'm going to stay here and see if I can find anything out through official channels. Won't hold my breath, though. Okay. Let, let me see. So UNC missing Marines. Admiral Kah Kahoku has asked you to find a missing recon team in the Sparta system. All contact with the team was lost shortly after they were sent to investigate suspicious activity in the area. So go to the Sparta system and the Artemis Tau cluster and look for the recon team. I feel like that's where I'm maybe heading next. Yes, I am. Because I'm going to be heading back to my ship right now. I'll upload the info where my team was last seen to your ship. Maybe you can get some answers. Do you have anything else to say? Commander, any luck finding my recon group? Um, I'm on it. I'll find them, Admiral. I appreciate that, Commander. I was running out of options. I'm going to stay here and see if I can find anything out through official channels. Won't hold your breath, though. Yes, yes. I'll upload the info on where my team was last seen to your ship. Maybe you can get some answers. Thank, thank you for saying what I read already. And I wanted to come up here because when I was wandering around up here looking for keepers, Caden hemmed at me. Okay, Caden, what do you got to say? I like that fountain. It's very soothing. Which? Uh, oh, that one there. Not too many people have free access to the tower. Even less get permission to meet the council. You guys are really quiet. Well, I just checked, and dialogue is as loud as it can get. Not much else I can do at this point. Okay, well, let's go to the fast travel transit system. And we need to head back to our ship. Which is... I think it's gonna my easiest way to get there is through CSEC, right? But we get elevator banter then, or elevator conversations, or elevator news updates. Maybe? That's worth it, right? <laughs> no, that's to the Presidium. Hmm. How do I get to my ship? Docking bay, this one. In entertainment news, Francis Kitt has announced plans to direct Hamlet with Elcor cast members. <laughs> The production will open dramatic theater to the Elcor with a Hamlet who uses Elcor body language and pheromones. Kit claims that he's also excited by giving a human audience the chance to judge Hamlet by his deeds and not his emotions. So they're not going to insert, like, tragic emotion insert here. I don't even know how they would describe tragic emotions. But, like, they're not going to include their normal, like, emotion dialogue in it. That would be... I, I would go see that. <laughs> Just to see what happens. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. Right? It sounds like my Logged. shepherd. The commanding officer is aboard. Exo Presley stands relieved. He is relieved. Okay. Well, let's head over to the galaxy map. And then I'll pull up my quest log and see where I'm supposed to be going. So we're going to work on find Liara Tissoni. 
and she's an Asari archaeologist, and she's being stopped by Saren because she knows lots of things about uh, Protheans. Artemis Tau, so explore the uncharted worlds of the Artemis Tau cluster to find Liara to Sony. Oh, I don't even know which planet she's on. Artemis Tau cluster. Okay, well, let's go here and try to figure out how to use this. So I've already read this once. And I hit escape again. And then I think I'm... There we go. Now we're in the Milky Way. Oh, I just realized it. it said Serpent Nebula. So I need to go to Artemis Tau. It's a pretty hefty trip. Oh, Sparta, Macedon, Athens, Kenosis, and Sparta, maybe? Sure. That's a pretty cool looking um, cutscene to travel places. I don't know, how am I supposed to know which one she's on? Did I miss something? Can I exit out of here? Okay, I must have missed something. Being sought by Saren, her last on location was somewhere in the Artemis Tau cluster. Explore the uncharted, uh, really? I just, how many, so there's, we're four different systems, and so far I'm on, there's five different planets. Ha oh my, this is gonna take a while. Well, <laughs> yeah, let's start at the Tremen, Tremen, Tremen Ray. Oh, I can't even go there. Tremen Ray is a dwarf planet composed of light magnesium silicates with deposits of aluminum. Its surface is covered by wide swaths of ancient dark, basaltic lava, possibly indicating the world was created through an impact with some other body in the system. There, its magnetic field is non-existent. That, this makes it impossible for ships to dump drive charge from orbit. That said, Treminare's minuscule gravity allows even cruiser-sized vessels to land safely for direct grounding. But I, I can't, I can't go on there. Oh, okay. So this is the next one. We've got Edelus. Commander, I'm picking up a signal from the planet's surface. It looks like an automated distress beacon. Edelus is a terrestrial planet with an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Edelus's surface is covered by wide deserts of silicate sand with only a few areas of ingenious rock highlands to break the ab abrasive, dust-choked wind. Edelus's orbit is congested with debris thrown inward by the gravity of the gas giant uh, 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 Aunt Amak Ma Malka. <laughs> oh my gosh, words. And, and the, all of these new names are just going to murder me. Anyway, due to high rate of meteor impacts, exploration is highly dangerous. Well, <laughs> sure, let's land. I'm not, I'm not sure what to, what to do with this. Okay, well, let's bring... Hmm. Let's bring... I want to bring Ashley. And then... Huh. I guess I have to bring Caden if I want both biotic and tech. So, sure, why not? Let's, let's do this, you two. I can level you up some when I'm down there, right? What? Just... <gasps> oh... Um, is there a map? There is a map. Okay. So I'm in a Mako. There's a distress signal, there's debris, and an anomaly. Okay. okay. Let's, um, let's see how this goes. Alright, so far, not, not terrible. I, 
feel like this is an improvement over what was probably in the original. <laughs> Gosh. There's something over there. All these asteroids just... That's not good. That's not good. We need to repair. Repair. Quickly. Quickly repair. Oh, gosh. Where is it? It's right there. Right there. It's right there. Six or seventh try, so um, I lost count. That's how bad it was. And and second of all, um, it doesn't explain to you combat. I mean, like eventually, <laughs> I went to the options and the key bindings to find out that 
oh, there's a cannon that I can use. Well, that would have been useful to know because I was just using the machine gun or whatever it is at first. And then the extra control button, not sure how useful that is, but like, yeah, we need to save after that because um, I think I've used all my Omni Gel on this fight. And there's an Alliance Marine over here. Oh, I need to, how did I get, sorry, I have to go back to my options again, key bindings, because it doesn't tell me how to get out of my, my, my car. So, let's see. Exit vehicle was Q. Okay. There we go. Weapons out. Because there's things. Alliance soldiers. Looks like they were lured here by the distress beacon. What, what, what quest just updated? Oh, the missing Marines. Admiral Kahoku has asked you to find, yeah, this was the Marines that I just, just did. You found the dead bodies of the men who served under Admiral Kahoku, returned to the Citadel Tower and informed the Admiral of their fate. Oh, that's awful. These are Admiral Kahoku's men. We need to tell him what happened here. Any thoughts, you two? Ready. So she's wearing my old outfit. It doesn't have the, and seven on it anymore. And then Caden, anything to say? Yes, ma'am. I guess that's it. Is there anything else out here that could be useful? Any Omni gel? Because <laughs> I feel like I'm out. Um, I've got 10 left and I feel like I needed 15 at, at one point to repair my, tr my car. Do I have any weapons I can uh, Omnigel that one? Convert this item to Omnigel, yes. Now I've got 14. Well, let's look at the map. So I've taken care of the distress signal. Wonder what's over here? Anomaly. I feel like it might be a bad idea to go do this, but let's do it anyway. I killed this big beastie, as long as there's not another one. Nope, I still can't repair. Nope, I keep hitting all sorts of buttons and it's not repairing. <laughs> Note to self, make sure you're fully stocked up on Omni Gel before heading to a planet. Am I even going? I'm going ish in the right direction. So yeah, uh, don't get too close to the monster. Otherwise, it eats you. The the magical acid spit that follows you no matter where you go. Got to figure out how to fight that. It was like a big sandworm or something, though. Um, this is such a bad idea. Solarian. Recover our. Okay, hang on. Can I. Let's try to recover the artifact. Okay. Who? You found Captain Milone's identification tag. How it ended up here is impossible to know for sure. I have a journal, area map. Locate signs of battle. So there are a few, there are several League of One medallions and a few ID tags scattered throughout these systems. The hunt must have been extensive and taken years. So one of three Solarian ID tags, zero of 10 League medallions. You have found a Solarian artifact, keep looking for more. So I guess X means I'm done, maybe? Well, let's go see what this, Debris is. And then are we done with the planet? My poor car. <laughs> this is so fall. Does it get repaired when I go back? Redeploying. Oh, that's right. Um, sorry. I say the word. I I keep pushing the wrong button. I keep hitting E because the universal interact button is E, except in Mass Effect, apparently. So 
where am I going? I gotta go back this way. This car is a little, um, bouncy. I mean, I have, I have boosters to, to jump and I have the, the speed up boosters. Again, wish the game would have told me how to do it before, you know, the fight. <laughs> but I guess it assumes you actually read all the instructions before you start playing and I'm, I, I don't. because we can't just leave this unsalvaged. I, I feel like we're gonna have to do that. But I'll make a note and we'll come back later with, I don't know, towards the end of the game or something. I have no idea why I just got in here, but how do I get back to the ship again? <laughs> um, oh wait, I could do it from the map. Return to the Normandy. That seems to be everything. Okay. I have to see who has higher electronics. Um, Caden or... Oh, I can't pick. Mm, dang it. Caden or... Garrus, I think. Okay, well, we did Edulis, but we'll have to come back at some point. So that was two. So the third one is alt -Aya. So while Aya is an unusually large terrestrial world with a trace atmosphere of methane and ammonia, the surface is frozen and mainly composed of sandstone and other sedimentary rocks with deposits of iron and chlorides. Judging by the sedimentary composition of the crust, it appears that Altaea once possessed an atmosphere thick enough to support some form of liquid. What cataclysm stripped the atmosphere and left the planet to freeze is not currently known. 18.1 Earth years it goes around the orbit. Oh. Day length is 47 Earth hours. Wow. That's a long day. So this planet is Aunt Amalka. So Aunt, Am Aunt Amalka is a large hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of chlorine and sulfur in the atmosphere. Its massive gravity well tugs many asteroids from the outer belt inwards past the orbit of Altaea and Edelis and eventually settles into the inner belt. Aunt Amalka's orbit is congested with hundreds of captured moons. Most last only a few thousand years before being injected, dragged down into the atmosphere or ripped apart by tidal force and added to the gas giant's immense rings, attempting to navigate this chaotic environment is hazardous at best. Ships without military-grade kinetic barrier are likely to suffer catastrophic impacts. Yeah, well, let's just stay away from there then. But apparently we can do a survey. Gas deposits surveyed scans from orbit have detected a large concentration of hydrogen. Okay, I mean, it's a hydrogen helium gas giant, so why, why was that not obvious? Okay, there's the asteroid belt, it looks like. And then we have Alsages. Small distant Alsages is a small terrestrial with a trace atmosphere of methane and argon. The surface is composed of water, ice, and calcium with occasional deposits of light metals. During the Alliance's pirate suppression campaign in the 2160s, the Batarian Eluem Ranpera was caught with his frigate Taneron grounded on Alsages for drive discharge. When challenged by a cruiser Hydro... Hi Hyder Abad, Ranpera refused to surrender. The Teneran was destroyed, attempting to take off the debris as strewn across the southern hemisphere. 73.8 Earth years to go around the thing of it, to go around the sun, basically. Wow. Scans from orbit have detected a small deposit of plutonium. 
I don't know if does that get me anything? Like, okay, we've taken care of Sparta. So let's try Mastodon. Sure. I know it's probably just a loading screen, but it looks really cool, right? <laughs> so here we have Shargilla. Warning, level one pressure hazard. Sargilla has a very dense atmosphere of ammonia and oxygen. Its temperate surface is mainly composed of alumina with deposits of sulfur. Calm buoys in the systems have recently logged a number of unregistered vessels operating nearby. Sargilla has an extensive silicon-based oxygen breathing ecology. Heavily populated areas are covered with fine silica, silicon dioxide dust, the respiratory byproduct of the world's higher animal forms. High speed surface winds, often laden with abrasive silica dust, present a hazard. In areas where the wind deposits a, gr a great deal of silica, footing can be treacherous. EVAs are discouraged. Well, I, if we're gonna land, I, I have to investigate. So let's try Garrus and Ashley this time. I mean, I'm not sure it's gonna do me anything because we're in a car the whole time. I feel like, well, no, there's thrusters probably making you not land quite so hard, but that looks really hard, gotta say. Level one hazard, I don't know what that means. A stronghold, debris, and, oh, anomaly. This could be a very bad idea. But let's save and try it anyway. Worst case scenario, I'll have to come back, right? A stronghold, level one hazard, and I'm level, what level am I right now? Garrus, your electronics, I can't level your electronics up either. Oh, Ashley. Oh, Ashley, I need to level you up desperately. But we're level six. I feel like, I feel like this might be a problem. <laughs> It'll be fine. Guys, let's go do the debris and the anomaly first, and then we'll go back to this um, stronghold. Is there a quest I was supposed to be on for this world? Let me look. No, I don't see a quest, so. Not sure what the exclamation point is all about, unless I'm doing it in the wrong order as usual. Can I? Okay, so this is me trying to back up. It doesn't actually back up. It just kind of, you're driving in reverse. That's not very useful. I don't like that. Uh, oh, oh, gosh. Okay. What is this thing right here? Um, I don't understand. There's a thing. Here we go. Salvage. Ugh. Hmm. Hmm. Well, if I have to come back for this, I may as well come back for everything. Hmm. I'm wondering if we should just kind of poke around until I find the planet that I need to go to. Okay, so we have to come back to Sargilla. Let's see, are there any other planets here that we could scan maybe okay here's one we can just survey so Pora Poralin is an enormous terrestrial planet half again the size of earth despite its thick atmosphere the weak output of the red dwarf mastodon leaves its surface biting cold the crust is mainly composed of silica but significant deposits of iron and other industrial metals are present these loads may prove rich enough to be profitably mined despite the heavy gravity 21 Earth years. 
Matriarch's writings recover as you were scanning the planet Porolin when a strange signal came from orbit. Navigator Presley determined the signal was from an ancient beacon. You sal your salvage team brought the beacon aboard and found one of Matriarch de Leninga's writings in its storage compartment. Does that get me a... It takes way too long to get out of here. Journal entry. Valuable minerals. To maintain its fleet and continue to expand, the Alliance must find new resources wherever it can. You've recently surveyed an important deposit and claimed it for the Alliance. There must be more like them in the Traverse. Okay, so that's what I need to do to when I'm surveying the planets. That's one of them. And then the other one is... Uh, sorry, writings. These writings belong to Matriarch Dillanega, maybe? I, I keep saying it differently, but anyway. It looks like there are many other writings to be found scattered across the galaxy. Ten more. And then find more minerals. Okay, okay. Well, let's just do this logically and in order, and I don't want to land on Sargilla. I, I really don't. <laughs> I have to come back anyway for electronics, so I may as well come back later. So, Portland we did. How about Patavig? So, Patavig is the second of the Macedon system's giant terrestrial planets, and by far the more interesting. Most of the surface is covered by a vast sea of liquid ammonia. How is that interesting? in which a unique aquatic ammonia-based biosphere has developed. While the frozen continents are largely bereft of life, a rich bounty of complex organisms, many larger than a human, flourish in the chilly, toxic seas. While dreadfully inhospitable to humans, Padavig is suitable for colonization by the Volus. Oh, negotiations between the system's alliance and the Volus's patrons, the Turian hierarchy, have made good progress. Ew, okay. And then finally, we have Fargaluz. Is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant with an abundance of airborne hydrocarbons. 111 Earth years. Gas deposits surveyed. Scans from orbit have detected a large concentration of xenon. Okay, well that's this cluster done. I, I, I don't know. This system done, maybe. I don't know. Athens, perhaps. I keep looking for... This girl was supposed to be looking for. She's here somewhere. Sal Salamis? S Salamis, maybe? <laughs> the geological properties of Salamis have been scanned from orbit. I have to be saying it wrong, because no one would name a planet that. But little else is known about it due to its thick carbon dioxide atmosphere and proximity to the energetic star Athens. The equatorial daytime temperature have been known to turn the surface. Oh my god, no thank you. The crust is composed of iron with deposits of platinum group metals. Now we have Proteus. Like the Hanar homeworld, Proteus has more than 90% oceanic cover. The incredible heat thrown off from Athens raises global humidity by ew, 100%, creates constant cloud cover, and powers Colossus typhon, typhoons typhons, <laughs> that rage across the surface year-round. Hot, humid, and storm-wracked, Proteus' rare combination of oxygen, nitrogen, atmosphere, and carbon-based biosphere nevertheless recommended for colonization. A pilot program program is studying the possibility of colonies below the ocean surface, safe from the wor worst effects of the weather. Oh, that would be interesting. Colony founded 2179, population 12,000 plus, capital is Ithaca. Interesting. Okay. Gas deposit surveyed. Proteus has a large amount of free oxygen. Well, there's a lot of water there, so that does make sense. Okay, so next one looks like to be Nausicaa. Traces of sodium in the atmosphere give Nausicaa its overall dark gray color, but it is otherwise a typical hydrogen helium gas giant. An abundance of water vapor in the upper atmosphere account for its white clouds. 57.6 Earth years. That's insane. Not as insane as the one that was 111. Okay, that one's Pharos. Let's go to 
Circe. Circe is a modestly sized hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of sulfur and chlorine. Chlorine, yes. These give it its striking yellow-green tint. As the development of the Proteus colony continues, Circe will likely be developed for helium-3 mining. So gas deposits surveyed. While scanning this gas giant, you detected a large concentration of helium-3. Really? On a hydrogen-helium gas giant? I never would have guessed. <laughs> and Pharos. Distant Pharos has seen only a cursory examination by an unmanned probe. It has a trace atmosphere of nitrogen and argon. Its surface is mainly composed of tin with deposits of carbon. Deeper craters have been partly filled by ice, suggesting there may be a significant amount of water locked up beneath its frozen surface. A large ice bright crater in the southern hemisphere makes the planet visible from the inner system, leading to the planet's name. 275.4 Earth years. Turian insignia recovered. Scans of the planet, Pharos revealed an abandoned base on its moon. The recon team found nothing of interest, but much of the debris has marked was marked with the Magna Colony insignia. Okay, well that's well that means that Gnosis is is where our our lady needs to be, right? Well, first up is Phaistos. Phaistos is a small terrestrial with a trace atmosphere of carbon dioxide and xenon. The surface is scorching hot and mainly composed of sulfur and various silicates. There is little in little of interest in on this desolate world. Yeah, probably too hot. Okay, next up is Therum. Therum is a distant but rich industrial world claimed by the Human Systems Alliance. It is plentiful heavy metals have fueled the recent manufacturing boom on Earth. Core samples rich with fossils of simple silicon-based organisms indicate Therum was more habitable in the past than, than it is at the present. Perhaps, he, perhaps this explains the many... Oh, Prothean ruins! She's got to be down here then! Dotting the surface, most of which have been looted by mining companies. Colony was founded in 2167, population 34,000. Capital is Nova Yeka, Yeka Turinburg. Six years. Oh, okay, well, let's land and cross fingers. She's here. Okay, so let's bring um, Ashley and uh, Garrus. Let's, let's try that again because I wasn't able to last time. Like we fought a sandworm. Commander, I'm picking up some strange readings. Really strange, like off the damn charts. It looks like it's coming from an underground complex a few clicks away from the drop zone. Okay. Oh, okay. So I have to get down around here, and I have like no <laughs> metagel or the the fix it stuff for my my car. But well, we're gonna have to try it anyway, and hope for good things. Maybe <laughs> I can always get out, right? <laughs> but anyway, now that we've spent all day searching planets for Liara, I believe I think we finally found the right one. Cross fingers. Um, but this is where I'm going to end things for today because we're definitely at time. So in tomorrow's video, we'll pick back up here. Hope we can make it through these canyons. I feel like bad things are going to happen. I just don't. I had don't have much confidence in my Mako skills, but we'll 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 see how it goes and and go from there. So as always, thank you so very much for watching. Please do keep yourselves safe, and I will see you again tomorrow with another new Mass Effect video.